I believe that this life that you had wasn't even on earth and it was either in another solar system or star system or another realm. I was like in this jungly like location and it almost reminded me of like a very old empire but instead of people there were lion beings. life readings how can they be helpful well the thing with past life readings is you get to go back in time and see what your past self has done you can see any lessons that they learned lessons that they didn't learn but should have and so on and so forth and you know personally I really love these types of readings because I feel like I learned more with these types of readings than I do with any other ones because of the lessons that, you know, might, might need to be integrated to your current self now that you missed out on. And also some of the things that has happened in the past or your past life may explain some things that are going on in your current life, like certain fears or certain traumas and so on and so forth. So with this video today, we have Duran. I thought it would be a fun learning experience to do a past life reading for him and I was lucky enough for him to accept and so we pretty much dive into this together. I told him a bunch of information that you know he didn't know in advance so as I'm telling him this is new information he you know doesn't know of it and as he's you know validating and stuff I don't know any of the things that he was going to say so again it's new for me as well and you know this might be one of my favorite videos because I actually learned a lot of stuff through doing this reading for him, like different types of entities. Um, we came across a civilization that I didn't even know existed and it dates pre-Earth. So that's fun. But anyway, without further ado, I have Duran here from Dead Serious Investigations and uh, here we go. So Duran, do you want to introduce yourself so pretty much what do you do and, you know, and then you can go in and tell people where they can find you. Yeah. So my name is Duran Conrad. I am the lead host investigator to Dead Serious Investigations. I'm also a demonologist. I study also in ufology, the occult, and um, I do a wide range of other stuff like look researching into secret societies. Um, a lot of other stuff like cryptids, all that type of pretty much everything that's kind of hidden from the public. I that's the stuff I'm really interested in looking into. So I do all that stuff. Um, uh, we investigate homes, we investigate haunted iconic locations, and we make we establish contact with many things that uh, like spirits, elementals, um, you name it out there. I mean, we're going to figure out and find out what's going on in those locations. And uh, as demonologists uh, identifying demons, uh, I help people identify their problem, whether if it's a demon problem or if they're just dealing with a spirit that's maybe just agitated because they're frustrated that they're living in their home or they may be trapped and there's a lot of build up emotion, um, stuff like that. So I kind of help people understand what kind of stuff that they're dealing with so that's the kind of line of work I do um yeah awesome. oh and then you can find me on Instagram um we are on YouTube also so uh I mean all you got to do dead serious investigations type it up on YouTube you'll find us it should be videos that will pop up right away uh unless they shadow ban me <laughs> <laughs> um so uh they also we also have uh, the Instagram, it's going to be dead underscore serious underscore investigations. And then you'll find us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. And I will link everything and put everything like 
as I'm editing the video, it'll be on the screen and also down below. So anyone who's interested, you guys can click on the links down below and you can find him. He is really awesome. And I'm actually really excited to work with him today. Yay. Yes. Yes. So yes. So we're going to dive through with um, some of these past lives I found. But first, I want to talk about like how I got what I got in my process just a little bit for those who are curious. So usually I'll do a meditation and I'll do it for as long as it takes to get the information. So depending on the things going on around me, it could take, you know, a few hours or I'll have to chop it up into like days. Um, and when things get complicated or hard to get, because sometimes it'll be hard to get that information. I don't know why I do this, but I do this. I take a hunk of rose quartz crystal and I meditate with it. And I just picture it being in the ground and being connected to all of the land of this planet. And it helps me connect faster and get more information. So that is what I did there. And then once I took all my notes through my meditation, I then threw some Oracle cards down to validate stuff and voila, that was the process. So yeah, let's, let's get into this. So when I did the notes and I typed them up for you, I put them in chronological order the best I could. So we started with the first past life, which is during pre-earth. And mm -hmm. so I believe that this life that you had wasn't even on earth and it was either in another solar system or star system or another realm. Because what I saw was very, I didn't expect it. And so um, where I was, I was like in this jungly like location and it almost reminded me of like a very old empire but instead of people there were lion beings now um i'm sorry to interrupt no it's fine uh, so the lion beings were they on all fours fours or were they actually stood up kind of as uh standing like kind of human so i feel like it was a mix because in this lion empire it wasn't just lions there there were other animal beings there too some of them right. were on two legs some of them were on four legs most of the lions i saw were on four legs but there were some other they almost look like egyptian type gods with like human body and then animal head mm -hmm. so yeah so it's interesting that you say that because um last year um during the moon of leo uh, just before that, I, I had this vision with my eyes closed. And regardless of if it was a vision or an actual an apparition, like visiting me in an astral projection, um, it was there right in front of me with my eyes closed. And I saw it clear as day. And it was the head of a lion, but with a humanoid kind of body, but hairy. Uh -huh. And so I'm wondering why I saw that, because... My um, my astrology is not really connected to Leo, so mm -hmm. that's why I was like, "That's what does this mean for me?" You know, mm -hmm. and I was like, "I understand the moon of Leo is coming up, but um, now that you're saying this, that kind of makes me think back to that now, and there's a connection mm -hmm. of why I seen this line." Yeah, I'm getting chills. <laughs> mm -hmm. That and is, I wasn't afraid of the lion either. Like yeah. this lion looked so it materialized so well with my eyes closed. It was like the face of this lion, the main big and everything. And it was right there in front of my face, but I was not afraid of it. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, as if I was familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And just for the viewers, I literally just sent him the notes. So I have no idea about his experiences and no. he pretty much didn't <laughs> read the notes yet because he literally just got them. <laughs> yeah. So this is a surprise to both of us. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I'm literally for the first time looking at the notes right here. And yeah. uh, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm going to read this out loud 
just so they know what I saw. But yeah. so time frame again, pre-Earth, location, line, empire in like some jungly type realm. There were other beings, not just lions that were, you know, a combination of like almost humanoid, but like with animal heads. And then the lion ones were like on all fours. Some of the lions though, because now I'm picturing it and I'm seeing it again. Some of the lions had like jewelry, like jewels on their like head and like gold bands and stuff. And I feel like I'm seeing one with wings. Wow. It's weird. And then um, the lion that you were, you were a shunned and one that was imprisoned temporarily. But I'm going to go in and read this entire thing about the actual experience I had. So they literally had this hierarchy within this city of lions, but it was more of an empire. And in a jungle type area among the royal family and the royal family, like I described, had like the jewelry, had like wings and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to put that in the notes, but eh, there were, okay. So there was this king or leader type thing or version of the lion and then there mm -hmm. was a queen like or supportive female role in this empire and they had a young lion cub that had like the mentality or maturity of a 12 year old human boy so just picture a human boy that's 12 years old but in a uh lion cub body and so this young lion was out alone one day and accidentally got himself into enemy territory and he was then chased by beings and began to panic and uh because he was not able to escape but then this older lion which is you <laughs> mm -hmm. comes in and saves him and i'm reading these notes and i'm realizing my my voice to uh type has this all screwed up so i'm sorry if you're like oh, what? but so you save the lion cub and then um, this actually kind of is similar to another uh, past life, but we'll get back to that later. And so the lion that saves the cub, which is you, is like if a 25 or 27 year old human male was put in a lion's body, really, because that's kind of like the mentality or maturity that he was. Um and then you and this lion cub build like this brotherly bond. And yeah. And the thing is with this lion that saved him, he was an outcast, which meant he spent most of the time outside of the empire and he wasn't allowed inside the city gates. And so when Wynne got back to the leader or the king lion, um, he was thankful that his son was protected and then one day a team of spies infiltrated the lion's empire but the outcast lion happened to see them conspiring as he was laying outside the city gates he tried to warn the leader but before he could get to him and tell the king you know lion what was going on the spy mm -hmm. had already started sabotaging the empire and because he was the outcast and wasn't able to warn the leader in time. He was blamed for what the spies did. However, um, he was able to clear his name and fix the mess that the spies made. And the only thing was he was still captured because he went inside the city gates, even though he wasn't allowed to. But so that's why he was imprisoned temporarily. But once, you know, the king found out what happened, he let him go and... Um, so he was back to being an outcast and still wasn't allowed to go back in the city. And the cub was really sad because, you know, he loved, he was like your little brother and he didn't want to see you go. He wanted to spend more time with you. So that was the first past life. Oh. Mm -hmm. I know I got all of that just from one experience. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. so when you say the first past life is that basically the at the birth of my soul or at like the first one that you picked up that was the first one I picked up I don't okay. know if it was the birth of your soul mm -hmm. so I don't know about that I just know okay. this is in chronological order this was the first one that I had got gotcha 
Mm -hmm. The second past life was during the ice age. That's all I got. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish fine. I had Pretty more. Mm -hmm. I wish I had more for you on that one. Mm -hmm. Then the third one is between the 13th and 15th century in Palestine. Um, you were a human that was involved in the Franciscan mysticism as some sort of priest or religious figure. So whether you were a priest or a friar or somebody of that kind of like position, um, the person that I saw looked to be in like their late 40s, early 50s, kind of older. Um, <laughs> uh, you were someone who was a devout follower of Jesus Christ. And as a Franciscan mystic, you believe Jesus as the incarnate and universal Christ. So like he was, you know, the only Christ, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were somebody who wanted to spread and pass those teachings on. Mm -hmm. And you did this through writing and keeping records. And you were also an herbalist and felt that it was your duty to take care of the sick and the poor. So, yeah. Do you have any questions on that one? <laughs> um, or statements? I mean, I don't have really anything except that uh, um, the, uh, so, so what was uh, during that era? I mean, what, what kind of landscapes are we we're looking at during that time? So, Pal so it would be Palestine. I'm thinking like a lot of stone type buildings um i mean i'm thinking dry and deserty yeah um i i'm trying to pick up any kind of um memories of any kind of trips that i've had uh through astral projections that i've had in the past or any kind of lucid dreams but i have i none that i could remember in like any kind of deserty areas Mm -hmm. But I've had a lot of reoccurring lucid dreams where I am in an area like sometimes a field, sometimes like almost like the woods, and it's very green and alive. Well, everything is very green. In your fourth past life, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm. All right. So also with this third one, I'm seeing like a dark almost like a cave or cavern. And I see you holding a candle walking in there, but I don't know what you're doing in there for. It's mm. just, oh, okay. There's people there and it looks like you're taking care of them. And some yeah. of them are like um, criminals. So you're, so it looks like you're healing and you're taking care of people, every kind of person, whether they're criminals, they're wealthy, poor, don't matter. It looks, yeah. yeah. And so like the caves are there to conceal like the criminal type people. Oh, very, sounds very empathic. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So then we're going to move into your fourth past life, which was during the 15th to 16th century. And this is where... I don't know if you can see the little drawing I did of the the wooden house, but you look back at it. Sorry, my phone closed out on me just now, and I have to re okay. put it back up. Here we go. Okay, let me see if I could zoom. Oh yes, I could zoom in. Yeah. So uh, this house, it looks like you're on a lot of farmland, and you mm -hmm. have like this little plot of land. So it's the house that looks almost like a wooden house yeah logs you have a thatched roof and you have a little plot of wheat growing there but it's all oh, wow. farmland yeah it's of the celtic region of mm. northern europe and mm. um if you don't know anything about northern europe and the celtic regions they're really good for farming it's a lot of farmland mm. and a lot of rolling hills too mm-hmm and in this one, I see you as a human male wearing knight-like armor, and you're about 25, 26 years old. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like you're returning home to your family, so your, yeah. your mother and your younger brothers. Um, yeah, so in this experience, 
There was this mother and two young boy children between the ages of six and eight years old. The younger one was ill and the mother was trying to take care of him, but having a difficult time because she's poor and didn't have any food to take care of her children. The father was out of the picture for whatever reason. I don't know why, but wasn't there. Um, they lived in a tiny house, as I described, and it, they also had a little pond next to it. And it kind of looked almost swampy, but I mean, that's just how that pond was, I guess. And um, one day while she was in crisis, your past life. So this man that's 25 to 26 years old comes and he gave the impression that he was either the oldest son or the father, but now I know it was the oldest son. And you were returning home from fighting. And like I said before, you were wearing a silver knight-like armor and the man sees the woman in crisis and you take your brother and you go out to look for food and you bring back some like herbs and plants and stuff. And I'm also now seeing that you were helping him and you're teaching him how to hunt like uh, rabbit and small game animals. Um, yes. So you guys spend more time together and because you're his older brother, you know, he looks up to you and he's really happy that you're back and you spend some time with him at that um, little pond next to the house. Yeah. You go searching for stuff for fun. Cause you mm -hmm. know how little kids be like, they want to look for stuff in ponds and that kind of stuff. But you guys mm -hmm. found some kind of crystals. And I guess back then you considered them to be magical stones. And you did find an old toy and some runes from like um, the, which one calls it? It's the Viking era. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, some Viking runes. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. pretty and, neat. Yeah. So that one well, was that experience. Very cool. Does anything ring any bells for you with this one? Well, it, I mean, picturing how the landscape is for, um, uh, you know, uh, a Celtic landscape mm -hmm. would really make sense for me because I, so, Here's what's interesting is I'm in um, a field of just this grass. It's kind of like a little above my calves. And um, like it it looks like it's untouched grass, mm -hmm. really green and walking through. And this is reoccurring too. Th these visions and, and these dreams are reoccurring that I'm seeing. And they, uh, they're they just past my calves and in the distance there's trees and there's other pat batches of trees big bushy looking trees and the wind is perfect the temperature is perfect i could feel it all and i i could and i'm walking barefoot in this grass and so i could feel the grass in between my feet i could feel the soil uh, the moisture i could feel that in the grains of the grass I'm walking through and pass, I remember passing through uh, these big, tall, bushy trees and going through and moving branches and stuff. And it was, it just basically became like a forest of just green and alive everything. So I don't know if I was, this could mean something to what you saw in my fifth past life or fourth, sorry, fourth past life mm -hmm. um, that you saw where I'm this person in the armor, maybe uh, I was re basically coming back to revisit and try to look for my house in this mm -hmm. forest, in this dense forest. And maybe my home during that past life was in this realm or in forest or mm -hmm. timeline or wherever I was at. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that kind of tripped me out when you gave me this information because this dream has been reoccurred several times and I'm hoping that maybe this might give me closure to see more of where this is supposed to take me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and another note that I want to make about this is that, you know, dealing with the stuff that I do, cause I deal with objects that have anything from most of them being pretty, uh, malevolent, 
Um, but from time to time, that's why it's really important for me to cleanse on a weekly to even almost daily basis. It depends on what kind of energy that's I'm bringing home, especially at my job. Um, so uh, clean, keeping them clean constantly is important. And the second usually that I feel like, oh, things are going to be all right, then I start having my visions and, um, you know, these dreams and astral projections manipulated by uh, like the same reoccurring dream that I was talking about. And what I mean by that is um, the same being in the same plane of this grassy green and reoccurring dream I have at the end where I pass through those the area where I'm moving the twigs and stuff, trying to get through, instead of it being more dense forest, it is, but it, but I'm in this wide open space and everything's dark. Mm -hmm. it, it's not light and the, the light, the sun beaming through the branches and anymore. It's just dark and everything's windy. And what all of a sudden the, there's light beaming through, but the light is in the sun is this is a ship coming over mm -hmm. and i see the ship with several lights and it's covering everything there's lights everywhere in the distance in the trees i see three tall beings about nine feet tall on average i would say nine ten maybe even 12 feet and they're really tall there's three of them and they're they don't even have to walk and then they come towards me they got big almond shaped eyes and they're big and they're very frail bodies. And the energy I get off of these entities were pure malevolent. These were not good ETs that I was, that I was running into. And I knew right there that I had whatever vision I was having got intervened with a bad group. And I'm thinking that they were tr trying to attempt to maybe abduct me astrally because I've heard that some Orion groups like to do that, that they will abduct you astrally. And people think that, no, you could only be abducted physically. No, they could do it astrally, I've learned. And they try to manipulate you spiritually to reprogram you to kind of lock you out of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes sense to me because, you know, the fact that my awareness has been increasing, I've been starting to uh, experience a lot more things I've never been able to experience before. I think they're finding that a bit intimidating on their end. Mm -hmm. And um, as, you know, being a star C2, finding that out, uh, this would make a lot of sense why a negative species of ETs would be interested in me because of what I'm doing. And they're trying to intervene with my work so um so I'm not saying that it's all involved with the objects but i know that there might be some that correspond with some of these groups that are ets possibly and um but yeah i've had these visions manipulated before mm -hmm. so but i don't let those affect me but another thing about that vision just this last thing that really trips me out um is i wake up from the dream and my arm was numb and I'm like, man, I can't feel my arm. And I finally starting to get feeling to it. And I'm like, oh, it was on my chest like this. And it was numb, which is weird because it's just resting on my chest. It shouldn't, I shouldn't lose feeling with it. Just I'm not laying on my arm. It's just on my chest right here. And it was just my whole right arm. And then when as I'm trying to get feeling my arm, I'm like so tired, like that. I, I'm just going to go right back to sleep without even trying to get my feeling back in my arm. And I'm going to like close my eyes for a split second and I could still see them. Like they're in my room now. Like I drug either I drug them out from this visit that I was at and put, brought them into my room and they were doing stuff because I saw one of them and the two behind him observing his work and he was doing this. And you could see his long arms doing this to me like that. And he was like doing stuff and I opened my eyes and they're not there. And I close them and, and they're there. And I'm like, I'm wondering, maybe I still had a foot in this other reality. And my, like my third eye was still wide open and my, I had a foot in the other reality still. So I was almost partially still in there. And I 
did what I did the last time I had an attack, which was uh, expose light to these these uh, negative ones. Anything that's negative to me or that I feel negative, I will um, envision a bright light surrounding my body. As soon as I did that, these things just disintegrated. So um, I think that they were probably trying to abduct my astral body. And I stopped it before it was too late because um, I know that they're trying to probably get me to not figure out what this vision is. Mm -hmm. Because I think that maybe this vision would benefit me, you Mm -hmm. know? So I think you're right. I think you're right because so the forest, I'm seeing it as like you're going there for your hunting, but then they come in and I'm seeing these, like you said, these tall, lanky, like they're almost like a a lightish gray color with these big like almond eyes, like you said, and it looks like they're trying to prevent you from fully experiencing the astral experience, which is one of your past lives, I believe, because the thing with past lives is knowing a lot of psychics will say, you know, knowing them is pointless because you're living here now and you need to learn in the now, but there's a lot of lessons that you can learn from your past lives. And that's why I started doing them for people because I started noticing that there's actually things and lessons that now correspond to their current life. And so I think there was some valuable information that you were going to learn about this past life and they intervened and they, they can actually kidnap you. I've been actually kidnapped like so many times, not just by, well, mostly by demonic entities and negative earthbound spirits, not ETs yet, hopefully never, but you know how that, (laughs) but um, yeah, so I see them bringing you back to your room and yeah, they're doing something to prevent you and whether they are just, you know, trying to manipulate, you know, your thoughts and stuff and bringing you down in vibration because they don't want you to succeed because some ET groups do work with demonic entities and lower vibrational beings. So yes, you are absolutely right. And I've actually seen this happen before. And um, yeah, So when it comes to that, a lot of them will try to intervene your actual experiences and will try to stop you from learning something important because they want to keep you down in that lower vibe, that lower vibration. So, yeah, absolutely. And Mm -hmm. it it makes total sense, you know, uh, before, as in a couple of years ago, uh, yeah, about a couple of years ago when I, you know, began all this, uh, getting into the field. Um, you know, I was, I've been studying hardcore about this and researching and stuff, but I wasn't fully there on, um, really understanding who I was spiritually, really, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I knew I had feelings of what I needed to do. And that's where I was like, I need to get into the paranormal field now. This is the time is now. And I feel like I have to do this. And so I got the opportunity to do it, jumped in before it was too late to start. And all of a sudden, just explosion of an awakening happened with me. And just the first after the first year investigating. And then um, all of a sudden, you know, be, before that time, I was always like, you know, why me? Why am I seeing these so many things constantly but no one else could see it with me. And it would be frustrating. Like, I'm like, dang, like uh, I talk about ETs and, and spirits and demonics and stuff. And, you know, these black energy masses and stuff that would be manifesting at places and talk to people about this, especially the ETs, people kind of like, they're listening, but you could see uh, like in their eyes, they're like, you are full of bullshit. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, but I still, it doesn't stop me because, you know, talking to uh, someone about it was just making me feel more motivated to kind of look into it more. Yeah. So I didn't really care what people thought. Um, maybe when I was younger, but when it was much less accepted to talk about that stuff, um, when I was little, uh, 
talking about that literally you'd just be a laughing stock mm -hmm. um but now you know it you don't really uh, maybe it's because i'm an adult now and i don't really care as much um what really people would think but I, I mean that they listen care to actually hear me say you know um is it's it's really um uh, a good feeling because you know i mean i from what i notice is and what i do know is you can't force a horse to drink water but never miss the opportunity to plant a seed so that's how i look at you know, when I tell people my experiences or the stuff that I realized in my research based on my experiences uh, and the work I do, that maybe a little piece of information out of what I said might spark a bulb in their head where they might look into something about maybe themselves and and, and start doing the same thing, start spreading awareness and increasing awareness and you know help raise that vibration maybe tune that little bit of information is going to make a difference in their life where they do vibrate higher you know and that's kind of you know what i feel like i noticed that i is a really important part of my work is not just the infatuation of the evidence and all that, but also this evidence benefiting people by raising vibrations mm -hmm. and, you know, by actually learning to not fear the unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important because even if, you know, most people don't believe in this stuff, it only takes one person and maybe you just save that one person. And that's, you know, that's all that really matters is at least you saved one person or one person acknowledges it and then starts paying attention to the signs and stuff. So, yeah, we can't force people to agree or follow what we say. The only hope we can really have is is we just put out what we know our experiences and hope that maybe it'll spark some curiosity or someone will be like, oh, my God, that happened to me. And then just, you know, kind of go down that line. So, yes. yeah, and that's why I love to hear about others experiences, too, because then they say something and then it sparks something in my head. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what you just said makes a whole lot of sense of what I experienced. So there's a connection and I could give them some answers, mm -hmm. you know, that they have probably been dying to hear some answers over all the years, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> that's the best part of this whole thing is yes you know, getting more people to see through our perspectives and mm -hmm. just spreading more awareness and just guiding people who are lost who need answers oh yeah so, yeah that's my Definitely. favorite part <laughs> mm -hmm. but Definitely. so now we're gonna go to the last one gotcha is your fifth past life so the reason why I asked, so mm -hmm. before we started the the video, I had asked him if he knew if any of his family members were Japanese. And the reason because, well, I should say the reason is because um, this past life, I saw it and the time frame was December 7th, 1941, which if you know history, you know, that's Pearl Harbor. And, um, so I saw you as an Asian person. I'm one to say Japanese and you were flying over Hawaii and you were a soldier who was a martial artist and you participated in Pearl Harbor and dropping bombs and then were cursed by the Hawaiian natives. But um, so I actually had a vision of this right before I did the meditation, I saw a vision. I was standing under the American flag on a slab of like concrete. And it looked like I was at some kind of base for military. And for whatever reason, I had the thought that I wanted to set off an explosion. And I'm just like, what the frig? What? And, you know, it made no sense. And then I saw 
bombs go off over the American flag at this base. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, what is going on? And Mm -hmm. then I threw the cards and that's what brought me to December 7th and you being a Japanese soldier and dropping bombs on Pearl Harbor. So Yeah, that's so bizarre. Yeah. (laughs) Whoa. So I (laughs) <laughs> definitely i mean definitely something i was not expecting but i guess i can't expect everything that you know that mm-hmm. i want to expect but you know you just never know what to expect in your past lives mm-hmm. you know? yeah and so that was the last one but so for the lessons i got leadership as one of the lessons and it would make sense because it felt like the person doing the bombing felt like it was wrong but like they couldn't do anything to stop it because, you know, like in the military, it's like you do what you're told. And especially when you have other countries, it's like if you don't, you, you yeah. know. So I feel like with some of these, there's a leadership lesson. And I notice some kind of like um, corresponding elements, too. So if you think about the whole. I feel like you're the kind of person who does a lot of saving or likes to help other people, like you said, empathic. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it makes sense too with like the night, because when I see your astral form currently, I see you wearing armor and battling some of these negative entities. So it kind of makes sense if you combine that with you being a knight or some kind of warrior in your previous life where you were in like the Celtic land area Mm -hmm. and then if you combine like the follower of jesus christ as that uh priest figure the Mm -hmm. uh, franciscan uh mystic which is a follower of jesus christ and whatnot so it's like if you combine all these elements together it kind of puts you what you are now yeah Mm -hmm. that's so crazy Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's yeah. fascinating though. So um yeah, I think that you know the the one like I said, the, there's two of those past lives that really trip me out so much. The lion and the man in the Celtic landscape. Those I mean when so when you told me about that just before like as i was trying to situate this um i kind of drew a mind blank because i just couldn't uh i was in i was shocked with that i'm actually because it all everything was coming back to me the second i read that and i was like i need to regain my focus and get this (laughs) set up and um i was like oh my gosh i can't wait to go on video now because i have like so much stuff that I want to tell her about this right now because mm-hmm. this is pretty insane that how much this follows up with a lot of lucid dreams that I've had mm-hmm. and um you know it, I, I just wonder with the information that I got from you if it's just a matter of time before something clicks and one of my experiences where I see more now mm-hmm you know what I mean? So that wouldn't surprise me, you know, and what's interesting is that uh, recently in the past, uh, say, five months, some somewhere towards the near beginning, I would say probably February, I started having this ability to now con- basically control when I want to start seeing spirits. If, does that make sense to you? Yep. Um, where like when I have my eyes closed, because sometimes I would go to bed and I'd close my eyes and I'd see them and they would keep me up all night. Like I couldn't turn it off. And like they would just be flying everywhere, flying, manifest, big face and then dissolve. And then another big face dissolve. And they would just be everywhere. Um, and so it sometimes it would get I would wake up with a headache because it was just so much and um 
I would just feel groggy all day at work because of it, because I just felt like I was up all night, like chit chatting uh, with my my head and seeing just like I was at a party of ghosts. <laughs> and now I got to a point where I'll actually consciously say like, OK, I know something's around. Can you show yourself real quick? And then all of a sudden, boop, they start showing. And then I'm like, OK, I'm shutting the door now. And then all of a sudden it's just stopped and it's just black. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I could actually control this now. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's also the confidence, too, with the awareness that it's also helped. Mm -hmm. And um, the interesting thing was, I don't know if you mind me telling Go you this vision. OK, so there this was very I haven't really shared this online, so I might as well do this now. I had a vision where, so I closed my eyes just right before going to sleep. And I, I I set myself in the meditation mode where I wasn't ready for bed, but I was trying to meditate and just kind of really release and reset the energies around me. And then in that moment, all of a sudden, I started seeing these uh, what looked like velvety kind of colors, like red velvet. And these red velvet colors kind of were rotating. But then they look puffy, like clouds, like puffy red velvet clouds. And there was a bunch of them, and they were going far and far. As far as you could see, you could see velvet, dark velvet clouds. And it was all in a tunnel, rotating. And then... I was like, I wonder if I could go forward. So I visioned myself moving forward and I start moving. I start going in and I'm like curious of where, what, what's at the end of this tunnel. So I keep going and it's just more, the colors are more dense. They're more colorful. So it's more velvety and um, almost looks like rose petals or so that red is getting deep the further I got in. And I made it to the end and when I got to the end, it was dark, but then it started doing like this, like something was painting, like, like someone splashing paint over and over and it would go away and the paint was forming into something. And I was like watching and I'm like, what is this going to form into? And it was starting to make a butterfly looking kind of form. And it was like a dark purple. There was blacks, dark purple, and then the velvet red mixed in that this butterfly within the butterfly a head emerged at the center of the torso and it was like looking around like this so it was like a humanoid looking head and it was looking around and you could see the eyes nose mouth and it was looking and then i don't know if it was the excitement of seeing this but it terminated after that i didn't see past that um and i haven't been able to experience that exact vision again but What's interesting is right after that vision, I ended up successfully getting uh, moved up to where I wanted to go to at my primary job. I got promoted. So what I've been trying to do and what I looked at that, the feeling I got from that, I think this was my guide manifesting himself as this butterfly, as the change that I wanted was coming. Mm -hmm. that's the feeling I got from it and the interesting thing is that I felt that and then I got that job mm -hmm. I was like wow so it literally I I have a feeling that this butterfly that was I was seeing at the end of this tunnel was one of my guides mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it was like they're showing you this metamorphosis of you changing and blossom blossom it I can't even say it you know what I mean but, you know, turning into something awesome and amazing and becoming yes. what you want. So that's awesome. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is right after that, the secretary at my work, she called me and said, uh, well, she didn't call. This was before the call. But um, when she told me the good news, but when I received the email with the news, 
was uh, about me accepting the position be because uh, I was granted, you know, that I did great on the interview. And the time that she sent it was 10, 10. That was telling, my guides were telling me to trust the process. Mm -hmm. I saw that number right before this interview or this Yeah, that's interesting. Collab. That that's is so weird. That. That's so interesting you said that because right before this started, I saw two, two, two. I got four, four, four. So I was walking my dog and I'm like, oh shit, we got to hurry. Wow, it says three, three, three right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in, a different, you're in a different time zone. So that's funny. But yeah. yeah, I was walking my dog. It was 440. And I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, Ghost, because that's his name. My dog's name is Ghost. I'm like, come on, Ghost. We got to hurry this up. We got to get this going. <laughs> awesome. And we brought him in. It was 444. And I was like, oh, damn. And when I woke up for the first experience, because I did my meditation too before bed, so I fell asleep, mm -hmm. I woke up at 444 in the morning. Wow. So, yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. So, so cool. Whoop. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've noticed that, you know, I thought about taking, start taking like a lot of notes. Um, I've taken some notes on some of my experiences. I should have taken notes on a lot of them. But even then, can you see that? <laughs> keep records, yes. I was gonna yeah, tell that, you that your spirit guides yeah. are telling me to tell you to keep records. Yeah, um, I need to start doing that more. I need to dedicate some time in doing that. Um, and uh, I mean, but there's a lot of stuff that has stayed stagnant to my memory where I don't think I'll ever forget them because I remember some of my uh, elusive dreams when I was, I mean, six and seven years old and they st and it's still staying fresh in my head. I could remember every solid detail and how I felt in them. And I think there's just some visits that won't require me to write unless I'm like literally trying to write a book. Mm -hmm. But I know that there's ones that I feel like I need to write it down before it, I forget it. Mm -hmm. um i i've noticed that uh you know the the separation between you know astral projection or visions uh versus um normal dreams that people which would be uh basically dream illusion dreams you know normal dream uh usually you forget like after like the first three five seconds after awaking you start to re you remember it and then you remember some and then it's gone mm -hmm. um usually i take those uh i mean my theory of what i feel like they are, uh, are those are more of the illusions where they kind of uh it, it's almost like your thoughts are manipulated in picture for you um and they kind of are a little weird, but, um, and then there's ones that are very stagnant to you is because you were actually there. <laughs> Just I like I'm here and I remember exactly what I did earlier because I was there, mm -hmm. you know? So there's much more, um, you know, I feel like more depth to the separation between, you know, the two different experiences and sleep. Mm -hmm. So I've learned that. And, um, I've had, I've had, uh, other dreams where I feel like I've astral projected, maybe not in any of past life, but I think just kind of roaming around another reality, uh, quite a few times where I feel like I set myself, I stepped into some reality that seemed either very like twilight zoney kind of setting or uh because the, the timeline difference in like i was the spirit in this reality for these people because this is why i was so i was in a store seemed like a really big store and um just like a, a oversized grocery store i remember the ceiling being really high uh almost like a warehouse store but it didn't look like a warehouse it was just like really nice but and clean and uh, uh, just a very fancy store. And I remember going around the aisles. There was not that many people in the aisles. There were employees, but not that many employees. And I remember 
walking around with my wife and we were walking and looking at stuff and and uh all of a sudden I couldn't find her and I was like where did she go and I'm looking around the aisles I can't find her and so all of a sudden I was like you know what maybe she went out the the back because I can't find the front I couldn't find the front end the front door so I was like I'm going to ask one of these employees. So I'm going to ask one of these employees that they've seen her. They're not responding to me. And plus they're every employee is working like this. And they're like, do, they're working, but they're working super slow motion with their hands, almost like they're frozen time, but they're barely moving and they're blinking like that, but they're barely moving and they're not talking. And I walk up to another person they're not responding to me. They're doing the same thing, very slow motion. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm able to walk around them in their departments and looking around and everybody in the back room, I walk to the back room and people working on everything super slow and they're standing, just they're standing and blinking. And um, I was, so I was literally about to walk out the back door and I opened the back door to this store and then I woke up. Mm -hmm. So, and the reason why I think that I was the spirit in this realm and they weren't seeing me, they were the physical and I was the, uh, <laughs> the spirit. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I think that is because they weren't responding to me. The timeline was different for me for them versus them because I think that the the speed of time was different and I was going super, like I was moving at a probably 20 times faster speed than their speed and they're working in super slow to where I could almost barely see them move. And I was moving like shh, 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 dark really fast mm -hmm. because I noticed that with spirits, some of them come in slow, some of them come in quick and they, and the same thing goes with their speaking. Because when I capture voices, sometimes you will really oversee it or overhear it. Sorry, you'll overhear it easily because I captured ones where you have to get it, turn the, the speed down. All of a sudden, you actually hear a word. You're like, oh, my gosh. It wasn't mm -hmm. just a. You're like, what was that weird sound? And that weird sound apparently was a word because mm -hmm. they spoke so fast. Yep. So therefore, the spirits are actually. Uh, the frequency of their words are at a much faster time and space than us. Mm -hmm. So could it be possible that I actually was the spirit there? Mm -hmm. So what I've learned from Shiva, because I asked him, because I, I would be like, so all this stuff happened on the astral realm. And it felt like, you know, 10 hours and then I was only asleep for two. Why is that? And yeah. he told me that it's because the time on the astral realm and other realms is not the same as on earth. So uh, it goes much faster on the astral realm and other realms than it does here on earth. So what you're saying makes absolute sense. And you, you were either astral projecting, which would make sense because you can mm -hmm. go in any timeline you want. And, yeah. or you were looking through the eyes of another spirit so yeah that makes absolute sense yeah wow yeah um uh, i've had you know dreams where i would go through a whole time lapse of two weeks and then wake up and just overnight and i'm and i felt like two weeks went by yeah. well where's those two weeks yeah <laughs> it's like i missed there's missing time here like yeah. where is it all at and uh it's it, and then but only eight hours would go by mm -hmm. and i felt like i've overslept so much and you know that feeling when you slept you overslept and you just feel like your body just feels so like Ugh, yeah you know? that's the feeling I, I felt like i literally went through some kind of dead sleep like where i just slept for that whole time but mm -hmm. it was only eight hours yeah. And I was like, as if like my body, my astral body was literally out of my body and my body, my physical body was just like freaking dead weight. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. That happens to me a lot. Yeah. I still travel a lot. <laughs>
So, oh my God, yeah. that's almost every single night. But mm -hmm. to the thing you were saying with like the faces and how you would see them and then you'd be like, okay, I want to see this. That is literally how Chas and I like kind of experience stuff. Because when I go to sleep, it's usually that time frame is when I get the most like spirit yeah. activity. So I will close my eyes and I will see them. Like their faces will be like right in your face. Super close. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. they want your attention. And yeah, that, that happens to me all the time. And pretty much what you did and developed, you developed your boundaries. So when you're, when you don't want to deal with them, you're just like, okay, goodbye. And mm -hmm. so that's awesome that you were able yeah. to do that. Yeah. I, um, I, I mean, you know, I feel like I've seen it all, but I know I've only seen a micro spec of the, uh, intelligence out there in the universe, mm -hmm. um, just because of how many different types of beings i feel like i've seen more interdimensionals than human being spirits uh, but the question to me was always why do i see so many spirits or apparitions that don't seem to look human is it because I am glitching things for what they really are? Or are they attracted to me in some purpose? So I can give you an answer. <laughs> so the thing is, when you're open, there are more non-human entities than there are human. Right. So depending on your frequency, where you astral travel and all that, you're opening yourself up to all sorts of entities because I actually see more non-human entities on both sides of the coin, whether they're good yeah. or bad. I right. see a whole host of things and I'm just like, is that legit? Like, what did I just see? But yeah. it's, it's just because of how we are as beings, we have that opportunity to you know witness and come across other entities that yeah. are non human so that's amazing that you just said that and explained it that way because mm -hmm. that makes a whole lot of sense because i look at these other beings as not like oh you're a freak you look like a yeah. crazy looking no i look at them as another conscious being mm -hmm. you know so they don't really i don't fear them as much and the more that i witness this the less fear i'm getting mm -hmm. and um so it's like i'm very used to it I'm, i mean i've seen some really vicious looking demonic beings that don't even affect me anymore and when i see them it's like okay i see you but now it's time for you to go i don't provoke them i just tell them it's time to go now and i i do my light and they leave Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, threaten them. I don't do any of that. Uh, but I, you know, I've seen things that look like anglers at the bottom of the ocean, you know, with syringe looking needle teeth with a big underbite. Mm -hmm. And they got these little beady bright eyes. And they look like something straight out of uh, a, a little child's worst scary nightmare. Mm -hmm. And and they'll be right there in front of me, like face to face with me and try to intimidate me. And um, yeah, it's a little bit of a shock, but I feel like that's natural to be like gonna, like for a moment. And then, but after that moment, you're like, I know what to do right now, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and it's interesting you mentioned the angler fish thing because not too long ago, I was talking to Chastity as mm -hmm. we were discussing our episodes. And I always, every time I have an experience, I'll message her and be like, this just happened. And I did see an entity just like that. And I was like, really? hey, yeah. And I feel like we were talking or doing something for somebody. And I was like, okay, well, I see it like this anglerfish thing. And so, yeah, that is very interesting. Wow. But I know pretty much every living thing, whether it's an animal or a plant, has its own spirit tied to it. I've seen like entities that are like, the cross between a fae and a demon i've seen kappas like the japanese folklore i've seen mm -hmm. um i've seen very extraterrestrial things i've yes. seen very molecular things mm -hmm. it's there's just so many and it's like when they yeah. you see it you're like oh okay cool 
I've actually had one experience with an ET and that was on the astral realm. And we were having like this party. I don't even know if when we were doing the interview with uh, Lights of Midnight and you, if I talked about this, but it was like, I had this experience where I was at this party. I saw this ET. It was a good ET, but his skin was like blotchy, but it was like pink and blue, but blotchy. And he was humanoid and whatnot. Yeah. And he was just having a great time. I'm like, cool. Yeah. Like it was so lit mm -hmm. and so awesome. And just to see all the different entities that yes. even exist, even, you know, the ones that we see, like you said, aren't, don't even make up a microscopic amount. Yeah, no. There are yeah. so many. So many. It's, it's crazy because if you look at it um, in the physical realm, there are species in the astral realm there's species and other dimensions there are species so it's how many species really exist you can't really say because everything because people some people look at the astral realm like it doesn't exist because it's invisible yeah. so it doesn't count so no astral so spirits can feel they have emotions they could feel pain they could mm -hmm. it's another layer of existence it um and to me i feel like you know just because it, so because there's people that are trapped in the physical realm of things so they look at everything materialistic mm -hmm. um uh, unfortunately that's kind of the uh thing that that's the catalyst of humanity is looking at things materialistic but um you know with the phys i i don't know what it is but in the past few years or I wouldn't say a few years, I would say two, oh no, yeah, a few years, uh, I started overcoming this feeling of being less afraid of the, of, well, yeah, less afraid of the non-material world versus the physical world. Mm -hmm. And why is that? I think it's because of the corruption in the physical realm and uh the verse it you know there's there's more of a connection spiritually that i could trust in the spiritual realm like we're with spiritual beings than physical beings and i think that there it, that's why i feel like there's a lot more um openness to a lot of spirits that have been trying to communicate with me all these years and try to tell me something and why this awareness and these visions and all this stuff has started opening wide open for me mm -hmm. um so i think the whatever that was you know blocking me all these years has been deteriorating mm -hmm. and i think that that blockage was coming from you know, negative groups of ETs um, and demonics. And I think that there are a lot of angelic uh, ET groups that are very high frequency that are also working mm -hmm. with me too, as well as archangels. And I have uh, felt um, Archangel Michael's presence around me before. And I just knew it was him. And I asked, I said, I've never met you before. Is it okay if I could see you? And the second I said that with my eyes closed, I saw him for a, he gave me a second to see him and it shimmered like this. And it was this big masculine guy. It, it just was all silver. He almost looked like a, like a perfect statue. Mm -hmm. And that's how I saw him. And I knew right there that was him. Mm -hmm. And he did it right on my asking. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I want to stop you real quick. Yes. Um, so my printer had just gone off by itself. But before that happened, my spirit guide just said, hey, if you listen back to this recording, you're going to hear an EVP. And then right after they said it, that's when my printer went off. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> I don't know if you saw me looking like like over there. But mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, what is that's going on? so crazy? Oh so around this time, Doesn't surprise me. we need to go back into the footage and find some yeah. EVPs because I know we're going to find some. Probably. Mm -hmm. um, I would not be surprised. Just heads up, if you hear like a baby crying in the distance, some neighbors, their baby was out here crying a little bit ago. I think it was when you were, that was during the time you were talking about 
going over the past lives and stuff. Oh, okay. There's still kids down there. So if you hear like, yeah, they're kind of talking. So, mm-hmm. um, but if you share some of those, if you find anything on your end, mm-hmm. share it with me because then I could try to validate it if it's this little girl's voice down here. Okay. Okay. Like if you're talking right down there. Yeah. Cause what I thought I heard was a woman's voice. It didn't sound like a child. Yeah. I only hear children down there. Yeah. yeah it, I didn't yeah. hear a child voice. Okay. So that's, that's freaky. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that was a, kind of a frustrating thing for me when I investigate anything like live here in this section mm-hmm. is the contamination of neighbors because I live in an apartment. Yeah. So there it's and it gets very busy. That's why I like to do my lives late at night when people are more settled and, and mm-hmm. quiet. Um, right now, it's obviously early um, in the day still. But um, yeah, but learning like the voices of people out there, like, so I could identify, you know, Mm -hmm. them versus this. And plus, usually when you get that spirit talking, there's a certain pitch that you hear from that sounds very ghostly. They're uh, uh, kind of like most of the disembodied, like, especially if it's a disembodied voice, most of them, I mean, very rarely I've caught some that almost sound like a just a straight another voice in the room. Mm-hmm. But most of the time through camera or the EVP recorder, they have this distinct sound of sounding like someone talking underwater mm-hmm. or like past a wall. And um, but generally, that's how I hear it. I hear that somewhat often like if I'm trying to go to bed I'll hear like a faint voice that sounds like that Mm -hmm. or um, uh, other random stuff another thing I want to actually before I forget is I've had you know I'm sure you get this a lot the ringing in your ears oh my god before and after experiencing something every single day (laughs) yeah that's usually what will happen like Sometimes the ringing in my ear will happen, and then all of a sudden I experience some paranormal activity. Mm-hmm. So it's like, like uh, I don't know if that's a guide um, get, telling me to be alert of something that's about mm-hmm. to happen. So I, from what I've been taught, is you're like the archangel and guide ear, and then your left is like you know um, extraterrestrial groups um, or ET or upgrade and stuff like that, and. Um, so i get like periodic times they'll switch sometimes this size sometimes this type sometimes high pitch sometimes mid pitch sometimes low pitch and i also count how long sometimes the pitch is sometimes it'll be like for one second or half a second it'll just be one quick ring and then gone um sometimes it'll be like a long five second ring or even longer but i think the weirdest ones that i've gotten i don't know if you've experienced this before but this sounded some type, it, it sounded like some type of weird planetary uh, signal. It was making some weird, like it sounded like some bizarre 1960, 1950 style UFO type 50s movie kind of sound effect, UFO sound effects. Like, like, like the beeps, phew, multiple beeps, beeps, right? And shit. Yeah, yeah. Beeps okay, and, yeah. And pushing. Whoosh, 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 yep. whoosh, whoosh. and it, beep, beep, beep. it sounded like an old computer device that were that they mm-hmm. you know back in like you know some science uh fiction type movie you know in the, mm-hmm. in the olden days you know and, and it sounded like that and i was here i would hear the those tones every now and then it's happened to me twice already mm-hmm. it's happened to me at work and i'm looking around and no one's around me and i'm thinking it's my phone my phone's not doing nothing I'm like, why am I hearing this kind of stuff in my ear? So I don't know if I'm like receiving signals from uh, from something far away or what, or in another plane or a realm. And then there was another, the other time when I was driving home and I, I heard it again and I was like flipping through the radio. I'm like, why am I hearing that? And I'm trying to make it happen with the radio and I can't manipulate that sound with the radio. I'm like, I don't understand why I'm, I heard that same sound and how, what would be the odds of the radio making the same exact sound that I heard when I was at work, uh, two completely different time frames because 
the first experience and the second experience were like two and a half, maybe three months apart. Mm -hmm. So, and they were the exact same type of sound, the whoosh, 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 and then, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it was very weird. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, it sounded like some robotic, like some really strange sounds. I don't know how to explain it, but it's something that I've recently started experiencing and that I'd never experienced before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had that happen to me a few times. And I know sometimes I'm really sensitive to like the pressure change and whatnot, but it's weird. Like I'll get the whoosh and then it'll just be like, dong, like a, but it, it doesn't, it sounds mechanical. It doesn't mm -hmm. sound like, you know, the typical rings that I was hearing before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. I'll hear like, dong, beep, dong. And I'll be like, what? Is yeah. That? Yeah. So yeah. no, I know exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I haven't quite figured those ones out yet because mm -hmm. I've kind of looked into that, but I've no one really talks about it and no yeah. one really has the answers for it. So I'm like, uh, I'm, I, so I take it like, you know, I'm not going to stress on it. Like, you know, of the frustrating of, I need to find out about it. I think that eventually I'm going to be guided to finding out about it mm -hmm. over time. I think it's just patience is just going to have to happen. And with that, and I'm going to eventually over time, figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I wanted you to know and, everyone else know is the huge reason of the freeze in content right now and why um so during a project that i was working on say about two three months ago i was working on a project on my adobe premiere program the project involved angela the doll oh we all we all remember angela the doll mm -hmm. and um the project was during it was about the live that i did with obscure medium art and angela the doll was there involved with it so i was doing a highlight sketch little short it was about four to six minutes long and it was just all like the bombshell activity that was captured during that live through the infrared camera so Towards the end, I had all the dialogue in there at everything set. And literally all I had was some minor grammar errors. And right at the end, I literally had just fin have to finish two more grammar errors and then export. And that would be it. And it would be done. Before I could finish those last two grammar errors, all of a sudden, my Portable drive starts going beep, 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 making weird beeping sounds. And I'm like, what, what's the matter with you? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the Adobe software says it's not responding. And it was just like everything, all my content on the thing, all my clips were gone. And it was just spiraling with this, like not responding. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I was almost done. And then it just shuts down on me. And I'm like, what just happened? And my, I, I closed the program, closed everything out, carefully take out my hard drive because it's still beeping. And um, I put it back in, it does it again, and it's not showing it existent in the laptop. It can't find my hard drive, it's just gone. <laughs> but it's like there, the light's blinking, but it's making beeping sounds and it's not there. So I, my software was attacked by an entity and sabotaged my work and um so i had to send the portable drive to the factory to have some technicians try to safely recover my data um i did not have enough funds to have backup data at the time for all this because it's a whole lot of stuff i only had so much backed up on the primary hard drive on my laptop, but uh, my two terabyte portable drive, which was, still, I still have probably mm, like a good four, I would say 
or almost half of the hard drive still remaining. So that wouldn't even be an excuse for it to shut down like that. But um, considering the, you know, time, the timing of that happening. Uh, so I sent it in and they finally sent it back, you know, a month later. And this is recently checked the hard drive and I only got 40% back. And the other percent is either corrupted or it's it can't find the file. Mm -hmm. So now I have to find another technician that could help me carefully get this because it's there. It's existent. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be corrected because they didn't do what they, they said. It was 100 percent and then sent it. They didn't. I don't think I'm pretty sure they just kind of half did it and then just mm -hmm. sent it. And um, even there's other people that know about this stuff a little bit more than me that are more tech savvy with computers that say that they didn't do a full job with it and just getting the right person, I'll be able to get the rest back. So I've been kind of nitpicking of what I could work with. Mm -hmm. It's caused a huge pause on projects. So when I go back to my dire lane projects that I've worked for months and months and months and months are non-existent. Mm -hmm. So Therefore, I still have a fraction of each of those investigations. Um, I have the full investigation for the recent investigation at the Folsom House, mm -hmm. but all the Dyer Lane, everything's partial. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to work with stuff and try. I'm like thinking to myself at this point, I may have to just piece up a bunch of stuff together for one solid film for Dyer Lane mm -hmm. and then when the rest gets recovered, I'm going to have to do a lost uh, or lost footage episode, the mm -hmm. stuff that was re or recovered footage episode uh, where I have another portion of footage that I could put out. But now this means that I ha I would have to start over the project for Dire Lane. So now I'm moving on from Dire Lane right now for pause and just moving on to what's current right now. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be so what just makes me feel like that stuff is going to be even that much more interesting, even though it's the old, old stuff, mm -hmm. my early work, it's going to make it that much more interesting to me that the kind of crap that I had to go through with that, mm -hmm. you know, but um, I luckily I was able to still have all the photographs. It's mainly videos. Mm -hmm. it, the videos were are messed up uh, some of the pictures were all blotched in with all these weird colors look tie-dye and stuff i'm like what i don't even know what attacked my my stuff but it was insane it was an insane attack and it's not the first time i've even said on some of my lives that i've had my projects being manipulated on me right in front of me to where things were doing things that were very strange even my fiance was looking at like that's weird. Is that normal? I'm like, nope, it's mm -hmm. not normal. Uh, this thing's acting weird. And, and it only would happen if it had something to do with one of the objects. Didn't have much of a problem with it during like, you know, stuff that didn't involve the object. But for some reason, when it involved object, it, I think it because of it being at home with me, Mm -hmm. it, it felt like it had easier access versus at a destination that I don't obviously live at. And plus, they like to do mischievous, mischievous things, mm -hmm. uh, the things that are in this. So they like to try to do that to agitate. But I think that I think because of the stuff that was being released, um, I will say this. I mean, I might as well because. I mean, people are going to hear it and be fascinated about it anyways, but uh, I'll let you know one of the things and everybody else know one of the things that's captured on here that I was releasing the project that uh, where my stuff was attacked. Hands of the Doll announced Demon on record and I got it on video on the audio and it's clear as day. And I even called it out too right there on cue. I said, I think it just said Demon. Mm -hmm. And it said it, and, and here's what's weird. It said it in an Australian accent. The doll did come from Australia. 
and it was a female Australian name, says Demon, like the way the accent was. And I know that very strong uh, accent that popped through and kind of, uh, it kind of made a lot of sense because that helped me validate which object that was coming from. <laughs> because I only have one object that I know for sure that came from Australia. So, and it said don't before, because no voices came through until I put the spirit box right over it. And then it said, don't demon. <laughs> so it was like, like, don't touch me demon. Like it, it's kind of giving its warning, like stop getting close to me. And, um, you know, as far as like that, also the evidence on that live where I was talking about, you know, why Angela is Angela, you know, the, the purpose of that doll looking the way because it was crafted as, you know, horror memorabilia for me from some friends of mine, uh, Obscure Medium. They do breathtaking art, uh, dark art. And I had them craft this doll from an antique doll and to make it look like Angela from Night of the Demons, my favorite horror film. And uh, the entities in this doll understood that. They actually knew that Angela from Night of the Demons, she dances in that movie. And it said dance or dancing. I think it was dance, I wanna say. It said dance on the ovulus. And I was like, that is crazy because Angela dances in that movie. And then it said Mary, not Mary in the name, but Mary, like a wedding, Mary. And what is she wearing? A black wedding gown. <laughs> so I understood that too. I'm like, whoa, you got dancing, you got Mary. Mm -hmm. This thing knew exactly what it resembled, what it is. And, um, and it even said don't, and then demon. And then I... Uh, I'll disclose this too, um, but I think this is what kind of caused that because right when it said this is when this happened. So at the end of the video, it said 666. And because I, I said, what's in you? <laughs> and, it, and a voice came through the spirit box or at least I think it came from the spirit box, but it sounded disembodied. You know that what I was saying? It sounded like it's talking underwater. Mm -hmm. That's where I felt like it was more disembodied and didn't come through the spirit uh, box speaker. And uh, it, it, and also what makes me feel like that it didn't is because only my infrared camera caught it. So it's, it's disembodied. And I asked it, I said, uh, I said, what's in you? And it said 666 like that. And I slow mode it and it does it six, six, six. And then I quit my hard drive crashed right after that. Oh, yeah. So I want to tell you as this like last thing before we end it here, but yes. like <laughs> the last actual experience I had today, um, it was a current thing that was going on in your house, but I saw there was this entity, it was a doppelganger of you. It was pretending to be you and it wasn't you, but you mm. were also there. And um, my guides were walking me through your house and they said, there's a portal in a bedroom. And that's all they told me. So. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because that's interesting you said that because uh, I had the ovulus tell me while I was doing work because sometimes I'll have the ovulus on mm -hmm. while I'm doing my work on, on the laptop. And sometimes the spirits will give me hints of what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. And they'll give me some answers. All of a sudden I get portal closet arrived. And I'm <laughs> like, Oh wow, that's interesting. And that all connects together as like, you just said a sentence on my ovulus device. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, so uh, and I'm looking at my closet my closet's open and I'm like oh that's interesting is so it your bedroom it could be my bedroom maybe because they were saying it's in the bedroom like the main bedroom so that's why I was mm -hmm. like yeah could be okay. could be my closet maybe in my room 
could be uh uh that's what i'm thinking um i know that i do have i mean i do have a lot of protection in my room but i do have a lot of amplified energy in my room that could probably generate portals mm -hmm. and because of a lot of astral projection that it's probably uh i may have left some open maybe yes i can yeah. see it. there's doors there mm -hmm. yeah you got to close your doors mm -hmm. when you when you're when you're done astral projecting and i have yeah. to do too because of how often i do it yeah i think that's one thing that i'm also part that i'm trying to learn is mm -hmm. because astral traveling is still new to me mm -hmm. i feel like um it's more i feel like it's a little bit more complex learning how to control the astral projecting mm -hmm. versus you know uh seeing spirits with my eyes closed mm -hmm. and um the i think also the patience has helped me with the seeing spirits with my eyes closed being able to shut it out and turn it on mm -hmm. but the astral projection is completely different type of learning um involved with that i feel like Mm -hmm. and the thing too with your dolls and your spirit box yeah. when you do your investigations because yeah. my guys are showing me this right now it's like every time you have a mode of contact because they're there talking to you it's like when you do your actual projecting you create the portals well same thing when they come to you it's like they leave a door there every time they come back and forth to communicate so the spirit box is a tool obviously and they're using it to communicate but yeah. it's like them, that energy frequency of them coming in, it's like leaving that door there for them to come yeah. back and forth. And then doing those investigations just allows them to keep doing it. It's like giving them permission to keep doing it. You know what? What's interesting about that is, and also what I said about the Ovulus saying closet arrive portal. Mm -hmm. That was a long time ago, about a couple of years ago from, from now is during my first couple investigations i was uh reviewing but recently we've been noticing a lot of activity right at the doorway threshold of the room so mm -hmm. i don't know if maybe the portal isn't there in the closet anymore but right on the threshold you have multiple oh it's multiple i okay. see multiple. So i'm seeing makes... multiple right now so you have one yeah. in the bedroom that's mm. the one they showed me in the astral realm. Yeah. But mm. now I'm seeing for each item that you communicate with has its mm. own portal. Mm. And you have yeah, all in one room. So, yeah, because I've seen I see a lot of spirits. I mean, I see good and bad, like I said. But um, most recently, I've seen a lot of uh, small little gray ETs, like like children looking. They're like They're this tall, very right? Tiny, They're very like tiny. So, yeah. Two feet they tall, look right? like yeah super yeah. small like they could be like this small they could be up to my thigh area as as big as that so they're about this small like as if like a gnome size you know yeah. like a garden gnome like that them. to about up to my thigh like the tallest that i've seen and they like to kind of look at the doorway and they're looking at me and some of them are reaching over each other to see inside and you could mm -hmm. see their eyes blinking blink 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 and uh, their almond shaped eyes and their their bald their the whole body's bald mm -hmm. and uh they but yeah they kind of looking and they they do this a lot they do a lot of peak peak yeah like that and every time I look I move my eyes over they move or mm -hmm. they're gone and but I could see them clear as day through my peripheral vision and I could see their eyes blinking blink blink like that and they're looking yeah I've had an experience in my old office where, you know, it would be dead with no customers. So I'd be sitting there looking through the air and I was able to see literally a gray type alien. It was like two feet mm -hmm. tall and it was literally like walking up invisible stairs. Like you could see it walking up these stairs wow, and I was like, what is going on? Why am I seeing this? But it's like, there are so many realms and dimensions on top of each other. Yeah. that you know they don't see us and we don't see them most of the time but i was yeah. able to see into their realm or dimension so it was kind of yeah. cool so i know exactly what you're talking about because i've seen yeah. the little ones yeah the the timeline differences is what does make things complex for contact with each other mm -hmm. with the spirits and us and other 
interdimensionals and us. Um, and that I've had I've asked questions with spirits through the spirit box on investigations. What timeline are you coming from? Like, you know, try, trying to convince them to understand where I'm coming from in their timeline. So maybe that that could help. And I get a response saying, I can't really tell. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. They literally told me like that there I could see that there is confusion with some spirits that they don't fully even understand their timeline and how yeah. to connect that with ours. So that way it could make more sense with each other. Mm -hmm. So I could, that's why some messages, and this is for a lot of paranormal investigators out there. Mm -hmm. is when you get answers through your spirit boxes or disembodied voices yeah. is that you will get delayed answers all the time, or yeah. you'll get an answer way before you've asked it is because yeah. of the timeline differences. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, so all I know is that the, the portals there and there make sense because, you know, I think that the, it, it's always like, like I said, I have to cleanse a lot because yeah. I have to shut portals down constantly and, you know, shut them. But sometimes I, I have to keep up a little bit more on a continuous basis. Sometimes I get so clustered with so much stuff on my plate where I'm, I'm like man I ran out of time to be able to to close and it with the cross between work and then doing this and then father time and and you know just so much stuff just uh, everywhere and uh and then working the later shifts at my job makes it difficult too because uh I don't want to wake up my son to cleanse the whole apartment mm -hmm. so um I have to wait on days that I'm usually home. That's why I try to do it like on a weekly to sometimes I'll do it back to back on both my days off mm -hmm. just to kind of get that extra, you know, I, I do two different types of cleanses. I'll do a cleanse and then I'll do like a, a med a deep meditation cleanse and kind of um, really just use my light for a while to kind of really amp amplify the house with some white light and, um, and, it'll feel really, really clean, really good in the house. But yeah, these, these objects, I know that, um, I think I handle my, my objects very well. I know mm -hmm. that these dolls, some of these dolls in, in the wrong hands and some people that are just kind of buying up or getting on curiosity, some of these could really ruin people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that with the path that I'm in right now, the timeline that I'm in, I think that I'm handling them pretty well. And which makes me feel like I think that obviously I've been destined to do this. Um, yeah. Even a lot of psychics and one of the psychics that I actually work with, she even says, you know, no one could touch Pam. For some reason, I am the only one that Pam allows to touch. Um, I think it could be more of the care and ownership because how well I care for the, the object mm -hmm. uh, and how she spoke about that. The doll can be protective of me as well as it could harm me because the doll, the entities in the doll aren't benevolent. They're ancient and they, they're false. Mm -hmm. They are, um, they're very malevolent, but because of the, uh, the intention of me having the object, Mm -hmm. and my care for the object I don't I'm not out there to um showboat really with the object I'm not using the object I'm actually I look at the object as another conscious being because it's no longer a toy it's there are actual conscious entities inside that object mm -hmm. so that awareness is definitely very important with dealing with these objects so mm -hmm. that's what all I got to say about yeah. you know dealing with objects like that because it's extremely dangerous uh, if you're people out there um intentionally buying haunted objects for entertainment mm -hmm. kind of kind of manifest that into their lives because mm -hmm. um I, I see that a lot a lot so way. one thing my guides want to tell you one more thing they just want to make sure so the thing that you're doing to you cleanse the items individually too right yes Okay, so they want you to add a step. So when you're doing your cleansing, make sure, and they're saying this, 
when you're cleansing the item, envision the portal of each item being closed as well. Okay. So do what you normally do, but this add this as an extra step. Okay. Because the thing is, other entities are using the portal as well if you do not close them. So you could have some, um, what do you call it? When you get inter like interference from other entities. So if you get readings on your, like your equipment and it's different and you're like, well, it's been this for so long, but now all of a sudden it's saying this, it's because you're getting um, from outside entities that are messing with your readings and yeah. it's other that readings. makes sense yeah oh, most definitely so I yeah they're saying make sure you cleanse the portal of each object that you know you are doing for that day so when you're done or whenever you do your cleansing make sure you do the portal like closing and for me i just in visualize and whatever you use you can in visualize the white light or the gold light or her however yeah. and i always do a motion of it closing where you can okay. do like a door of it closing and just in visualizing it. You can um, ask Archangel Michael to close the doors too, to make yeah. sure it's done. And then that way, when you go back and do your investigations, you shouldn't have outside entities using those portals. And it should just be with what you have already in that room. So awesome. That helps. <laughs> just as you were talking about that, it's mm -hmm. what interesting thing is when I was tapping like this, yeah. I just had a ring in my ear. One second, high very high pitch ring in this yeah. ear in my oh, right yeah. ear that's amazing mm -hmm. and so, you were just talking about archangel michael and yep that's awesome like, mm -hmm, yep mm -hmm. sure <laughs> yep. they're telling me to tell you that so yeah i also, yeah, I also uh, have uh this candle right here i had this lit for a little bit but um it looks like it kind of put itself out mm -hmm. so the dolls uh, put it out yeah, <laughs> I know. I think one of them blew it out. Well, I got this clown right here. Um, that was sitting right next to it. This guy right here. So he's sitting there right next to that candle in this little chair and mm -hmm. maybe uh, blown the candle out. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to thank you so much for mm -hmm. doing this video with me. I oh, thought yeah. it was so fun and very validating too. Oh yeah, uh, that's well, why I brought up all this other extra stuff yeah. towards the end because it was connecting with all sorts of other stuff that makes a whole lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely appreciate all this stuff because this helped a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, if you have any questions, you know, you can always DM me. Like, yep either through my personal account or through lights at midnight, like whichever is fine. But yeah, doing this was a really great practice. I do offer this as a service on my website. So for anyone who is interested, you can book an appointment on my website. So again, thank you to everyone who watched this video. I might have to cut it into two parts. We'll see. If not, we'll just, you know, put it up but thank you so much duran you are awesome and like i said before i'll link all your socials down below for everyone to come visit you on all your socials so yeah thank you so much 